Welcome to Happy Today podcast. This is a podcast for those who want to improve service experience of internal services. If you use ServiceNow or other enterprise service management system, then this is for you. I have today an extra special guest, Blake Morgan. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Blake is a customer experience futurist, a keynote speaker and author of two books, including More and More, and then you have the new book coming, uh, The Customer of the Future. Yes. So, uh, interesting. Uh, happy to have you here. And uh, you talk about a lot about the connection between the uh, employee experience and customer experience. How do you, can you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, so it makes sense that if you're happy at work, you're going to produce better work. And actually, my husband, Jacob Morgan, who's been on your podcast, wrote a book called The Employee Experience Advantage. And he did extensive research, I think surveying almost 300 companies. And what he found is that companies that invest in employee experience are 4.2 times more profitable than companies that don't. Yeah. So increasingly, companies are recognizing there's a link between employee experience and customer experience. And so it's a really exciting time for people like you and me who've yeah. known all along that, yes, of course, if, if your people are happy, if they have what they need to do their job, customers are going to feel yeah. the benefits of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, also you write that the modern customers, they want convenience and control. They crave the power to get what they want and when they want it. Right. And uh, we see the same with our customers and enterprises are moving towards that world as well. So mm. it's not only that uh, as a consumer we expect, but also it's in the business that whenever we are working with other companies and our customers and our vendors, we expect the same level that, hey, I want it now. I'm not, I don't want to be any more limited that, you know, I'm at four o'clock at the office, I'm closing my office. It doesn't work like that. Right. So um, and that's part of the transition that the digital transformation is, is doing and, 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 and the organizations are changing there. Uh, what are your, what's your take on that? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I actually ordered a fan for my house and I had to send it back. And I looked at, it was Home Depot, which is a company here. Yeah. You know Home Depot? Yeah, you, you've yeah, lived yeah, here yeah, a while yeah, now. Yeah. You probably had to go there for something for your house. And I noticed the call center was open except for two in the morning to six in the morning. And I just thought it was interesting, like why close it for four hours? Like they couldn't, but now we're in this always on world where customers, it's a 24 seven world. Yeah. And customers are getting these seamless, zero friction on demand customer experiences from companies like Netflix and Spotify, Amazon, Apple products. Yeah. A lot of these companies are actually digital first companies. Yeah. So they have this advantage of embracing technology from the beginning. And digital transformation is definitely something I've been exploring for a few years. It basically means solving traditional problems with technology. Yeah, right. And I've had this epiphany lately that customer experience is really just about problem solving. It's just solving customers' problems. And that's actually what great artists do. They're very creative. Yeah. And creativity is just being an incredible problem solver. So now our companies need to be like great artists, thinking of all of the beautiful, wonderful ways we can create experiences for other people. Experiences that we personally would want to have. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's uh, very interesting. And, and when you talk about the, uh, the experience and the customer experience, uh, it's hard to talk about it, you know, without the data. Yeah. So um, you wrote just recently, actually, I'll, I'll share the link with you, uh, the 20 best customer experience metrics for your business. And that was something that got my eye, and I think you might be interested as well uh, to share this link. So can you tell a little bit more on, 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 on those metrics and how, how you see uh, the challenges between, you know, the data and the how, how it's, it's, it's used there. Yeah, so we know that in our own lives, if we can't measure something, we can't improve it. If we want to save money to, let's say, buy a new car, we have to look at where our money is going and how much we're spending every month, how much we're making. 
And so it's the same with our businesses that we have to be able to look at where we're at and yeah. to continue to improve in that way. And so data today provides this wonderful opportunity to do that, especially with advances in machine learning yeah. and the ability to plow through millions of pieces of data and identify patterns or find outliers and find opportunities to make our businesses run more efficiently, more smoothly, or perhaps offer a customer a product that's more personal to them. Yeah, exactly. So we get into this topic of personalization. Yeah. And so there's so much potential today with data, but I think what we need to do before we even get into the conversation about data is break down silos. So yeah. in a big company, yeah. it's almost like completely different islands. I worked at a big corporation and I remember nobody shared information. It was really like different companies for me as an employee, yeah. let alone for our customer. What a nightmare for them to be able to track information down. And so the point is that before we even talk about data, we need to talk about organizational structure and how we set our companies up. If employees aren't sharing data and creating experiences around the customer that are seamless, that provide one view of the customer, I can tell you that that customer experience will feel very disjointed and unpleasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have data actually quite a lot of like, for example, in uh, support situations that uh, oftentimes people are sent to another agent and then to another agent. So the complaint is that, hey, I had to explain my case for several times. And because of these different silos and before, because the data uh, uh, is in a different uh, 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 IT systems, for example, they have to tell the same information again and again, which right. is of, obviously very uh, frustrating for, right. for, for someone who's like, hey, I, I told you already this information. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It it's just shocks me today when, as a customer, I am a patron of these big companies and you feel bad for the employees because they're, they're embarrassed yeah. and they say, I'm so sorry, but you have to repeat yourself to this next agent yeah, I'm going yeah, to pass yeah, you yeah, off yeah, to yeah, because, yeah. and they complain about their software and their systems. And, and I'm just shocked that with all of the technology we have today that we're still creating these nightmare experiences for employees and customers. Yeah, yeah. A common um, example is going to the airport and your flight is canceled yeah. and you have to go talk to the gate agent yeah. and she's on the phone with another call center. She has yeah. no power yeah. to be able to just say, okay, you're going to Finland on a flight. Here's yeah. another alternative. Yeah, 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 yeah. Done. Yeah. She's on the phone waiting on hold just yeah. like you would if yeah. you just called anyway. Yeah. So it's like, what good is that employee? Yeah. She has no power yeah. Yeah. because she doesn't have the tools she needs to do yeah. her job. The experience is terrible. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, is there some uh, uh, examples that where you see uh, that the uh, data has made a, a clear um, a difference, for example, in, 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 in your, your experience? I would say Spotify is the best example of a completely data-driven company that is creating these delicious customer experiences. I love Spotify. And I think a lot of other people would agree with me that it's just such a personal experience. It's almost yeah. eerie that if they create a playlist for you, you rarely have to skip the song because yeah. they know you so well. And they're looking at thousands of metrics, looking at thousands of pieces of data. Because every time you even open the app, they know if you're jogging or walking, they're yeah. tracking everything. Yeah. And so I think Spotify is a really beautiful example of a company that from the beginning leveraged data to personalize that customer experience yeah. and to use machine learning and their algorithm to constantly get to know you better. Yeah. And the beauty of machine learning, the yeah. more you use that app, the better they know you yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and the better the experience. Yeah. And we have been thinking also the same idea that, you know, because basically the information, oftentimes the organizations have that information. So like, let's say uh, as an agent, uh, customer service agent, you have sold, let's say 1,000 cases mm -hmm. so why not use that information that okay hey you are good with this so you could automate already like okay hey hi, uh, Marco is very good with the uh, with uh, selecting the right coffee brand for the customers with whichever needed so why not automatically you know assign those cases to him and even better maybe he's the right person to train uh, the uh, the automation and the, the software robots as they are called today mm -hmm. so when you get most out of it you help the customer because um, also our data shows that the 
what people most hate with the services is the speed of service. Right. But also at the same time, what they most love about the service is the speed of service. Mm-hmm. So, 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 uh, so the, that really makes it makes a big difference there. Absolutely, I think everybody wants something fast. Nobody yeah. wants yeah. you to go yeah. slower. Yeah, <laughs> and, and as you as you said, uh, it's more. And I think it has. It's coming from the Amazon and other services that you know you can you can you can order whenever you want and you want it now. So you you prefer the same day delivery, but not absolutely. Rarely you it may be needed unless it's groceries, but 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 that's becoming the, the kind of the standard there. Yeah, absolutely. It's getting faster and faster, and so companies have the responsibility to look at supply chain logistics operations, how they're routing things to employees, just like you mentioned, to get things faster and be more efficient about yeah, it. Yeah. What would you improve? Like, What would be something that you would say that someone who's starting the journey, what would be your, your uh, like key takeaways or where, to, where would you start? Yeah, so for a company that wants to be more customer focused, your first stop is your employees, especially those frontline employees. They know exactly what is wrong with your products and services. They talk to customers every single day. But so often, senior executives aren't on the floor enough. They aren't in the factories. They aren't in the contact centers. And that is that is a missed opportunity. There are so many gems in your contact center, and you'll find opportunities for new products, opportunities to solve easy problems, low paying fruit. And so again, the contact center, your customer facing employees, they have so much knowledge that will be helpful for you. Yeah, yeah. And we know that we, we, we certainly, I, I fully, fully agree. Uh, is there about the metrics something that, you know, your favorite metric or, or any other that you would, you, you would want to highlight? I like simple metrics. I like simplicity, just like people in Sweden, Norway, and Finland. I like simplicity and <laughs> design. So. Net Promoter Score, it's very simple. Did we solve your problem or not? Would you recommend us to a friend? Yeah. It's, if, if you're not gonna recommend us, okay, let's see. Let's go to the source and find out what went wrong. Um, I know you told me before the podcast you're interested in this customer effort score, you like it. And I think that's a great one too because yeah. it's about reducing customer effort. Yep. Because so many of our brands, we make customers work. We make their lives harder to make our own businesses, to make life easier for our employees. It doesn't make any sense. If we want to win in business, we have to be service oriented. We have to be willing to be very, very thoughtful about product design, about customer effort. But again, if you just want to know, did I do a good job or not? That's a great question. It's easy for customers to answer. I think too many companies send out these long surveys with 10, 20 questions. I'm a busy mom and yeah. entrepreneur. Like I will never, yeah, 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 I will yeah, never yeah, yeah. answer that. Yeah, yeah. So make it easy for the customer, and you'll yeah. always get better feedback. Yeah, yeah. We used the airline example, and uh, I mean, they send. Uh, I fly uh, quite frequent, frequently, uh, and uh, you know, they send. Uh, How was your flight? How was your recent flight? Mm-hmm. And you know, the, the email doesn't come even on the same day that I took the flight. Oh, you know, really? It comes like, I don't know, a week or two or something like afterwards. And what airline do you fly? <laughs> Finnair. <laughs> Hello. Finnair. Come on. <laughs> <Here's something. laughs> but but I, and, and I don't know if they connect my data with the, with the actually, the, the, that flight. Mm-hmm. So I just, it, outside looking, it feels like, you know, it's totally disconnected of the, yeah. of the, of the actual happening. Like the other example, again, at the airport, is that you know when you go through the security, they ask that you know how was your experience today. Mm-hmm. But again, that is missing the link between the actual uh, uh, like what happened behind. So if I press uh, uh, a poor score there, was it because you know my flight is delayed or it just, right. I mean there is no 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 context de- no context or no, no mm-hmm. nothing to connect the actual service experience in, in yeah. any way. Be- the best would be like a text <laughs> from like Finnair. Yeah. You get off the plane. Yeah. How did it go? Yeah. Right when it's That's fresh true. in your brain, yeah, and true. you might give them a billion dollar idea if you said it wasn't great, and then you told them like yeah. the coffee was cold. Yeah. Perhaps they'd create like so much more business yeah, yeah, yeah. with that knowledge, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like a missed opportunity. Yeah, like, too sure. late. What's yeah. the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we see on the productivity data as well that there's lots of, like the, the example we used for a lost uh, 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 work time. That you know, whenever you have to handle the, the case from the one and another uh, agent, and you have to mishandle that, you missed the flight. You call them. 
So it's it's not only the customer time, but it's the internal lost productivity, and there's yeah. lots of lots of uh, uh, room for improvement for sure. Yeah, and mind numbing for employees because employees don't want to deal with that all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so let yeah, let's let software and automation take care of that stuff, yeah. so employees can do the fun stuff and make customers happy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, anything else you would like to share to our listeners on the? Yeah, I think it's great what you're doing with the connection between employee and customer experience. I think more companies need to get this. Yeah. And if we make employees happy at work, they're going to create better customer experiences. Yeah, yeah. and we know, that, uh, we have seen that clearly with the data already, like whenever the employee uh, experience and happiness goes up, we see with the productivity data that the productivity also goes up. So and this has a clear connection then to the, uh, uh, the customer experience and at the end it's the, the, the profit line. Right, so, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, coming and joining uh, for our podcast. Thank you so much, it's been really fun. Yeah, thank you.